It's not uncommon for there to be a lot of variations when it comes to handheld consoles. Different colours, some wild designs, and perhaps the odd version that ties in with a product or brand. So let's say, for example, that it's the early 90s, you don't want to play an old regular machine, you don't mind a bit of advertising on your console, and your favourite colour is red. What are your options? Well, if you're a Game Boy fan, perhaps you'd be interested in a Manchester United-themed Game Boy. It's got the club's badge and everything. Unfortunately, none of the Red Devil-themed video games ever got a release on the Game Boy, but it does at least come with the generic soccer game as a pack-in. For the Sega lovers, well, what about a Coca-Cola-themed Game Gear? Not only does this Japanese-only variation look snazzy, it even has its own game, Coca-Cola Kit, a kind of Sonic-ish platformer that was only released in Japan, starred the Japanese mascot for the drink at the time, and actually isn't too bad either. Pretty okay as far as Game Gear platformers go. But what if you don't like either of these, and instead you fancied a Red Atari Lynx? Well, that's where things get more strange. I mean, we're talking about a machine that you'd probably only be able to obtain by seriously damaging your health, as the cartons used to say. The subject of this shorter video is the Marlboro Lynx from 1993, which is certainly one of the more questionable times there's ever been. I mean, you've got a video game console, something that's generally aimed at younger folk, at least back in the early 90s, advertising cigarettes. That's curious in and of itself. That and the whole concept of advertising for smokes has largely been gone for so long that there's some people out there who are probably surprised that such things ever happened. But then, well, how do you think the old coffin nails got so popular in the first place, huh? There's not a whole lot of information out there about the Marlboro Lynx, seeing as it came out very late in the life of the handheld and only in a single country, which wasn't America or the UK. It's as hazy as the smoke-filled air in the 1980s pub, to put it bluntly. But it is an odd little thing, and it even had its own freaking game. So, let's have a quick little look at it. Anyway, advertising and cigarettes. There are still countries in the world where tobacco is advertised quite freely, but if you're around my age then, chances are you may not remember cigs being advertised on TV, but you probably still remember them on billboards. The various characters of cig advertising from the Marlboro Man to Joe Camel to Regal Reg and Lambert and Butler who are still probably remembered. Seeing as we're focusing on Marlboro, which is probably the most iconic SIG brand of the lot when it comes to advertising, it is worth noting that there's a bit of unofficial history when it comes to the brand and video games. If you played the likes of Namco's Pole Position back in the day, you may have noticed that very familiar red and white logo on the track. Now you may think that this was due to some sinister deal to include subliminal smoke advertising in the game, but that was not the case. In fact, Philip Morris sued North American distributors Atari over the unauthorised use of their trademark, causing it to be removed in a later revision. It had simply been included in the original because, well, cigarette advertising was a pretty large part of Formula One. These were the days when just about every team, race and frickin' tyre wall was sponsored by some brand of cigarettes. So much for actually advertising real SIGs in arcade games, Len. That said, if you play enough old races, you're certain to see some sort of advertising that's clearly for a made-up brand of SIG or whatever. When Philip Morris sued Atari, they were deeply concerned about it appearing as though they were blatantly just advertising cigarettes to children. A few years later, Sega's Super Monaco GP and another Namco racer, Final Lap, brought about similar legal actions from the tobacco conglomerate. At some point in all of this, Philip Morris executive James J. Morgan, the man originally behind the Marlboro Man, who once said in court that tobacco was no more addictive than gummy bears, true story, becomes CEO of Atari for several months, jumping back quickly after the original Atari breaks up in 1984. And despite all of this legal kerfuffle, the Marlboro Lynx is actually a thing that exists. How? Well, one wonders if it has something to do with the concept of Marlboro Miles and the Marlboro Adventure Team, something that may seem to be even more alien to some people nowadays. How's about a catalogue filled with various items that almost seem to present smoking as a healthy lifestyle choice, seeing as so many of the products appear to be aimed at rugged outdoorsmen? Marlboro Miles were introduced in the 1980s, and they were coupons that you'd get with every pack. A single coupon was usually worth 5 miles. 
You then had a catalogue of items which could then be purchased with these miles. Everything from Swiss army knives and skillets, ashtrays to bar stools, watches, tents, jackets, a whole range of stuff. Now, you would have to choke your way through quite a few death sticks in order to get the high value items. A Series 2000 Adventure Team branded Swiss Army watch, for example, would cost a total of 1,200 miles. That's well over 200 packs of 20 right there. An even more iconic denim jacket? That's going to be the equivalent of about 600 packs or so. It's something of a false economy, even if you don't factor in the various health risks and so on. Seeing as how Marlboro is such a well-known brand, these items do have something of a cachet amongst collectors of vintage memorabilia, hipsters and the like, although naturally they will have to get them from the second-hand market, as the Marlboro Miles promotion, along with the adventure team, is long dead. If you still had some unclaimed miles laying around, uh, well, I'm afraid the chance to redeem them has long passed. The adventure team, by the way, would actually promote and conduct all sorts of trips outside, hiking, rock climbing, off-road biking, all sorts of high-octane activity. It's just bloody weird that it's all in the service of something that's going to make it a hell of a lot harder for you to actually do that sort of thing. I think you know where this is going. The Marlboro Lynx? Well, there is a possibility that it's something you could have purchased using Marlboro Miles. At least that's often the narrative when this machine gets brought up. More than that, it was likely only available in Germany. You might be able to tell that seeing as Marlboro Abentara Team is on the front of the console, as opposed to Adventure Team, although said Adventure Team was German in origin. Now, I'm not sure just how many miles you would need for a Marlboro Lynx, as unfortunately I don't have an old German Adventure Team catalogue to hand. In fact, people aren't certain that it was even part of the catalogue in the end. These consoles are very rare, and it's thought that only 50 or so at most were ever made. Now, personally, I would question whether these were available to purchase in any catalogue. They're not exactly good quality, simply regular lynxes covered in paint with letters that fall off, to the point where some have wondered if the whole thing's a big joke designed to sell plain old lynxes that have been made up to look like they're part of some ridiculous old competition. The poor quality, to me, is a good indicator that they weren't available in the catalogue. Generally speaking, the various Marlboro products are actually quite well made and not cheaply done. Whereas this, well, it's not well made at all. That and, I mean, it's kind of plain, isn't it? Something rather important is missing. If this had been in the catalogue, I would kind of expect to see, you know, the actual Marlboro logo seeing as how that was on everything else. However, people on forums like Atari Age do remember seeing these machines kicking around at trade fairs and the like. Perhaps they were never put up for sale, and these fairs were the only places where they could actually be found. And if you were at that fair, you might well have played the game that went along with it. For yeah, that's a thing. Say hello to Marlboro Go! a game that was never fully released, and as such it is usually marked down as a prototype, although I don't believe that there was ever supposed to be any more game than what's here already. Marlboro Go is a very short game of German origin that's all about dirt biking. Weirdly, it's the only game that's fully dedicated to dirt biking on the Lynx, and yeah, it's this. The Lynx, as it turns out, is a very strange handheld. There's a single track with two checkpoints that you have two minutes to complete. However, you can earn extra time by hitting ramps with your wheelie at just the right moment, which gives you a few more seconds. If you go off the track, you slow to a crawl, and if you hit a rock, you'll be taken back to the previous checkpoint. But if you win, you'll get a message along the lines of, Respect! That was tough! Or, You're doing great! And yeah, that's it. You beat the track, and then just go straight back to the title screen. Apparently, here's how things worked. At the aforementioned trade fairs, you would play Marlboro Go on the Marlboro Lynx, and you would earn a prize depending on how much time you had left when you finished the course. Presumably this was something from the Marlboro Adventure Team catalogues. I mean, hey, at least it's a much healthier way of winning a Marlboro dartboard or torch or something along those lines. There aren't too many Marlboro Go cartridges out there, as you might expect, and the ones that do exist are just naked, boards with not even the semblance of being a cartridge. As mentioned, I don't believe there was any intention to actually fully release this or anything. 
However, the game has been dumped on the internet for everyone to enjoy for, well, the two minutes or so that it lasts. There isn't a whole lot to say about the game, really. It's, um, functional. Hardly the worst thing I've ever seen or anything along those lines. Now, one might wonder why this whole thing didn't cause any controversy. I mean, it's a games console that's promoting six, and as such you would think newspapers and media that already had their knives out for games in general back then would have been all over it. I mean, I guess it probably would have if anyone had really been aware of it. This seemingly only happened in Germany, and it also happened in 1993. By this stage, the Lynx itself was pretty close to the end. Not many games were being released for it, and Atari's focus was moving away from the handheld and towards the upcoming Jaguar. The Lynx was a machine that had its fans, but never came remotely close commercially to the Game Boy or even to the Game Gear. Perhaps all of this was just one little final splash of money for the Alien system, even if it hardly reflects well on anyone involved. And indeed, there is still a lot here that's wrapped in mystery. People still aren't fully sure if this spluttering red lynx ever dragged its phlegm-infused carcass to American shores for trade fairs over there, or if it appeared in the pages of those Adventure Team catalogues. Perhaps this video will help to shed a bit more light on this, one of the strangest and most questionable of all tie-in consoles. But until the next time, all that's left to say is bye for now.